How's it going guys? Just want to apologize up front for this video. You're going to see a lot of jumping around with this video. The reason why is I actually started doing some of the electrical work even before I pulled the transmission out of, and the engine out of the car. So it's going to kind of hop around a little bit, skip around, um, and you may have to kind of pick up the pieces. I'll try to leave little bits and, and uh, little notes here and there to kind of uh, keep you guys on track. But uh, yeah, yeah, this whole electrical thing, it is a mess when uh, when you look at it. I've never really liked doing electrical, but um, you know, paying you know a lot of these other people to do it, it's just it just was not in the budget to do. So I ended up having to do a lot of work myself. I think it comes out pretty good. So go take a look. All right, so now I'm inside the car. I need to take the shifter off so that I can. Uh, Pull this motor out with the uh, with the engine and the tranny all at once because it looks like the uh, tranny's leaking as well as the engine's leaking. So I'm gonna need to troubleshoot both of those. Good thing is that the tranny fluid is is clean. So, but it can also be a bad thing. It means one to two things: either uh, uh, the owner took really good care of the tranny, or they tried to fix a problem on the transmission by changing the fluid last minute, which uh, is also a bad thing. So we'll see what how it happens, and I'll uh, I'll show you guys an update video, uh, shot in a sec. So here I've got the center console off, got the radio out, uh, working on trying to figure out how to get this shifter out so that I can uh, drop the transmission with no problem. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. All right, so funny story. I went through all this to get all this taken apart and come to find out that the shifter is not connected down there. There's only one bolt connecting it underneath the car. I mean, it's uh, it's good because uh, I was planning to clean this up anyways, put an aftermarket stereo in. So I had to do this at some point, but uh, yeah, it uh, didn't need to be done right right now. As far as that bolt that needed to be replaced, let's see if I can squeeze under here. That bolt right there. Let's see if it'll focus. That bolt right there, it connects to that little lever right there that controls automatic transmission. And all you have to do is undo that bolt, unhook that. I put the bolt back on just to uh, make sure I don't lose it, or that nut, uh, to make sure I didn't lose it. But uh, that's all that's connecting that, that shifter to the automatic transmission. Uh, it may be different if it's a manual, but since it's an automatic, yeah, this is what it is. <laughs> this is the wiring harness I ended up using for the stereo. I believe it's called the Metro Wiring Harness. What I like about this harness is that if you want to, those RCAs it has right there allows you to use an aftermarket stereo but keep the uh, factory amp if you want to. All right, guys, got the stereo up and running along with the Flexstream touchscreen. Man, it was a pain in the butt to get that thing wired up. Spent a couple hours last night working on that, trying to get it all fixed up. So waiting for a couple other little things to come in so that I can uh, uh, button this all up and close this all back up and, and be done with this, uh, this part of the interior. But uh, looking pretty good. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, happy about that. So I ended up having to change the setup on the stereo. Wasn't very happy with it, but I ended up getting rid of that Popformance uh, unit. It just wasn't acting right, it was really clunky. Um, thought it was a problem with the unit. Come to find out there's something else going on because I cannot seem to figure out why this won't turn on. Uh, when it used to turn on before I pulled the motor and everything, so there's some type of electrical connection I don't have right and I'm wondering if it's something going on with the fact that I have an aftermarket stereo with this because there's a whole bunch of harnesses now that are unconnected behind there that I think connected into the factory stereo also too ended up having to switch out the transmission uh, uh, temp gauge because the one I got it was one of those max what is it max toe gauges from glow shift and the thing lasted all of maybe about 30 seconds and then it just stopped working 
needle stop moving everything and I was pretty upset about that. So I ended up just going with one that's just a straight digital gauge and it uh, looks like that'll work out pretty well. Over here still got my, my oil pressure gauge as well. So yeah, everything's all kind of back together. Looking really good. Sad thing, I gotta take it all back apart to find out what's going on with the AC unit. All right, so got all the speakers wired up. Ended up throwing an aftermarket sub in here, as well as two new uh, four inches in there. The four inches are Pioneer four inches, like they're mid-range or mid-level uh, type of uh, speaker. And then I ended up getting, uh, not too expensive, a cheap little Planet Audio 10-inch uh, sub, which is actually, uh, it'll sound pretty good. And then over here, um, I completely took out the stock amplifier. The stock amplifier was trash. It was causing this buzzing noise. So I want this aftermarket Alpine. This Alpine is only running the sub. It's not running anything else. It's a mono amplifier, runs the sub. Uh, the sub is a dual voice coil, so I actually got it bridged down to two ohms, which means uh, this thing is pushing its max power, which I believe is around, I want to say, uh, four or five hundred watts, you know, RMS. So. Pretty good, pretty good with that. Same with the door speakers. The door speakers are right in here. Same four inches, Pioneer four inches I threw in there. Uh, so uh, sounds really good. It'll sound really good with those. They've got the built-in tweeter as well as the, uh, as well as the, uh, uh, the cone on there. And then also too, did some aftermarket tweeters in here. I actually just grabbed some cheapo ones out of Walmart, you know, picked them up for about 15 bucks for a pair. I believe there's some Polk Audio, so uh, they should, uh, no, not Polk Audio, uh, Power Acoustic, so they should do pretty good. Up front here, got the battery, ended up doing some custom terminals. Right now I don't have them bolted completely down, so that's why they're kind of at crooked and cockeyed angles. But uh, I like this because this, what it does, it allows me to bolt on the stock, uh, the stock terminal. But then if you look back in here, it actually provides a couple little spots to hook in some extra um, aftermarket type of connections. So I got my power for my amp right here in red. And then down here, my extra power wire that I have that's running the, uh, uh, it's running the uh, uh, coils ignition coils and it's also providing a 12 volt, volt source that I'm able to mess around with inside the cabinet. Over here same thing custom ground terminal so I ended up uh, uh, using the stock terminal you know and then also to have another ground that I was able to run back into the, the car. And then another thing I did too I ended up putting in another ground uh, I like in that video when I pulled the engine out, you could see that I snapped the ground wire, so I went and got another one. This one's connected directly to the transmission. Make sure that's grounded properly so there's no fire, and also too, so the starter doesn't sit there and try to um, draw power off of this little wire. Because I actually had a problem where I didn't have that ground and I tried to crank it real quick, and this, this wire started melting because it was the only ground that was connected to the chassis. So took everything apart, put it all back together. Got everything to sit real nice. Figured out what the problem with the temperature control gauge was, the climate control gauge. There's something called a noise filter. And there's a little two pin plug back there that has some little module that uh, I unplugged through in a box and not knowing that that goes to the ignition power source for the uh, climate control. So found that, plugged it back in, thing just fired right back up, lit right back up like it's supposed to. So make sure you keep track of whatever you, uh, you take out of the car. Um, so you make sure you put it back in. Now, you look here, everything turns on. Let's see here, actually the climate control. Sorry for the glare. Actually going to the climate control. Everything works. Yeah. <laughs> you can turn
turn it up, change it from recirculate to outside air. Probably can't see these too well because of the glare, but this is the front and rear defrosters. That's the AC. You know, whether you want it to hit your top vents, top and leg, leg or leg and defroster, uh, as far as window defroster. This knob right here controls the temp, turns it up and down. And then if you ever just want to turn it off, you just press that, cuts the power. Stereo down here works like it should. Now with this stereo, what I ended up doing is I ended up taking out the factory amp and I took the, uh, the power wires from this and I ran them all the way to the trunk because that's where all the amp connections are so that uh, I could remove the amp completely. The stock amp is completely gone. So all I have is the, the one Alpine amp that's now running the sub, as well as the other Alpine, or as, as well as this that's running the, uh, uh, the, indoor, the interior speakers. And uh, what I ended up doing, oh, what I ended up doing, again, sorry for the glare, is I ended up setting the crossover. Oh, since I don't have any music on, it's not gonna play anything. But I ended up setting the crossover so that uh, um, when, uh, uh, with the interior speakers, there's no bass coming out of those speakers, no low end. And then I set the rear uh, so that only low end is coming out of the rear, out of the sub. So that's uh, that should help with uh, getting that nice clean sound. Actually sounds really, really good. Um, as you can see here, temp gauge is working. Oil pressure gauge is working. Thing with the oil pressure gauge is you gotta make sure you put it on the same ground with the sensor. If you don't put it on the same ground with the sensor, you'll get this uh, voltage differential. So what I'm having right now that I'm gonna have to go back in here and fix is um, I have this vol voltage differential so that this gauge is reading probably about 20 PSI lower than actual uh, because the gauge on the ECU or the, the sensor on the ECU is reading perfect PSI because it's it's wired in with the same ground. This one is reading 20 PSI less. So, you know, kind of scared me, but you need to make sure that you, uh, you wire this one in. The gauge as well as the sensor for the gauge, they each have their own ground wired. You need to make sure they're wired to the same ground so you don't run into that problem. But besides that, everything's going pretty good. There's a couple little lights I'm gonna have to replace. So um, the lights here don't light up. So I'm gonna have to go in here. I got some bulbs on order. Uh, the light behind the hazard doesn't light up. So I, I, again, same bulbs, I gotta go and uh, put those in as well. But all in all, everything is coming together pretty good with this interior. I ended up putting the armrest back on. Pops right open. What I didn't hear is I ended up uh, I've got a wire right here. Eventually, I'm going to mount this thing. Let's see here, get that out of the way. I'm going to mount this thing uh, so that uh, it just kind of sits real nice and clean. There's a little mount that comes with this, uh, like maybe mounted right here to the side. Um, but all my uh, my aux connection, as well as my USB connection to the deck, are are off of this connection. And then this other connector down here is uh, is for my uh, aftermarket gauge up here. So whenever I need to do firmware updates to this thing, all I gotta do is just come in here, plug in, and uh, do the firmware update. And then of course there's a remote for the, the stereo, which at some point I'll, I'll use, but probably don't really need. And I, I like this because it just keeps it all real nice and closed up and can't really uh, see anything. Ended up getting a, a new kind of cover for this, put it on myself, uh, make it look real nice. And then all I really kind of keep hanging out is just my, my little uh, phone connector so I connect my iPhone and get the, the CarPlay, you know, working on the uh, stereo. So yeah, there we go. See y'all in the next one.